Welcome back to The Vienna Vibe. Uh, my name is Drew Edgar, and I am joined today by Carrie Rapp. Carrie, you want to introduce yourself quickly for anyone watching who may not be familiar with who you are? Sure. Hey, Drew. Thanks for having me today on Absolutely. Vienna Vibe. <laughs> Excited to be here. My name is Carrie Rapp. I am a Vienna resident running for city council. Mm -hmm. I've lived in Vienna pretty much my entire life. I think my family and I moved here when we were in the I was in the fourth or fifth grade. Um, still reside here, live in uh, live in Vienna here with my husband and our son, and he is a student at Greenmont Elementary. And what else? Good. No, no. Yeah, that's great. I was going to start asking you some of those things. How okay. old your son? He's nine. He's nine. So is he in fifth grade? He's in third grade. Third. I shouldn't. My daughter's nine. She's in third grade. I should have known that. No, my wife teaches fifth grade at Neil, so that's kind of why I was fishing for that. So yeah. So I was going to ask, but yeah, you said you've been from Vienna essentially your whole life. What What's your education look like? Where'd you go to school? Well, I was a Vienna Viking back in my elementary school days. Mm -hmm. Went to Jackson Junior High back then. Now it's middle school. Mm -hmm. um, moved on to PHS. And then um, post high school, I went to uh, Marietta College, earned my bachelor's degree in political science, and then went into the workforce. I mm -hmm. have worked in the health insurance industry for, uh, well, since my graduation from college. And during the pandemic, I decided I wanted to go back to school to earn my master's. And so I went to uh, WVU earned my mm -hmm. master's in business administration. And uh, here we are. Right. Yeah. So how has your experience been working in the health insurance industry? It's uh, keeps you on your toes, right? Ever changing mm -hmm. something new uh, year after year. So the industry itself has been um, very educational, right? Because mm -hmm. you're dealing with people in one of the most vulnerable spaces, right? Their healthcare, right. Um, you know. So understanding the complexities that go in to the system, to people, how can we positively impact the outcomes? Um, it's been very eye-opening and um, it's, it's really become my passion. Right, yeah, and there's, Man, I, I, so at my day job, I deal with health insurance companies a lot, just on a completely different end. And yeah, it does seem like such a constantly moving target to keep on top of all of the, you know, new developments and everything that's going on there. So yeah, it seems like that would, and you've uh, been in a bunch of different roles within that industry as well, haven't you? Oh yeah. Various roles. Um, can proudly say I started at the bottom <laughs> and have worked um, my way up each each role, um, developing my um, knowledge, my skills, my experience. And um, ultimately, I'm today working with uh, some of our senior populations in a couple of states, West Virginia, Virginia, Maryland, and D.C., mm -hmm. and um, understanding the barriers and challenges that they experience and how we can positively impact whole person care. Right. Yeah. And so how has, and I'll, I'll, I do want to come back to that here in a bit, but I also wanted to ask, so living in Vienna for essentially your whole life, starting your family here, continuing to raise them here, obviously you're highly educated, you know, a young family that would have opportunities really anywhere. There has been it's been framed as a mass exodus of young people, people closer to our age, leaving the area as soon as they get a chance. Why haven't you? Well, it's funny that you asked that, Drew. So if you would ask my parents, um, I have a sister, and growing up, they would have bet money that I would have been the one to leave and my sister would have been the one to stay. And I, I've stayed and my sister left to mm -hmm. take on, um, you know, a, t a teaching opportunity elsewhere. But um, I, I've made the choice to stay here because I like the community. I like feeling safe when I go to my house at night, I know that um, it sounds a little cheesy, but it's safe, right? We can leave our door unlocked. I know we're not supposed to do that anymore, but like, it's not, it's not going to be the end of the world here. If, if you do some of these sort of 
things that you hear occurring, you know, 50 years ago, right? Because it is a safe community. Um, and in addition to that, like I wanted to stay close to my family and I've been fortunate enough that I've had um, flexibility in the companies that I've worked with to either be employed, you know, here in mm -hmm. a physical location or, you know, this new work from home environment. Right. Yeah. And there is a lot of value to that comfort, that feeling of safeness, that kind of feeling of community. I mean, I, I grew up in a very small town with that. Like we never locked our doors growing up and you know, we knew all our neighbors were close to them. It was a low crime place. And it's just that seems harder to come by these days. I don't know if that's just me uh, pretending to be an old man, but like I I think that is definitely a huge you know, benefit of Vienna that people may not necessarily consider, like uh, and even looking at all the surrounding areas, like uh, Vienna's what I, I don't have these stats offhand. This may be going nowhere, but I have to imagine it's one of the safer communities in this area, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think I saw what a study we were like the second safest or something in the, in the state. Oh, don't fact check me. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Same with me. I, I was mean, just kind of flying. Know, it's off safe. Here. So that's, that's one of the main reasons that I've chosen to stay here. Right. Yeah. And so aside from just that safety, that feeling of comfort, I mean, what's your experience been as a Vienna cit citizen? Like what's your experience been in the community? I mean, how has that all worked for you and your family? Oh yeah. So there's tons of activities and opportunities here. Like Vienna is a great place to live. And I know that some people, uh, maybe trying to paint a picture that that's not the case, but like it, it is a great place to live and there's tons of activities available to us. Uh, granted we're coming into the colder months, so we're going to naturally be inside more right. than when it is warmer, but think of all the outside activities that we have for our children in Vienna rec. Think about the friends of Vienna and the uh, freedom festival that we've put on, um, you know, for the last couple of years and this weekend we're having the glow on the O and we've had a rodeo a couple years and there's just so much like community opportunity. Um, even the family fun weekends, right. And Spencer's mm -hmm. park that the city puts on uh, it, it. There's just so much to do uh, right here in our hometown. And a lot of it's free. A lot of it's free. A lot of it seems a little more family oriented than some of the more bigger events in the surrounding areas too. Like as someone with three young children, I, I value that. And like you said, it seems like a lot of, a lot more of those type of events have been happening in Vienna recently. And you can tell there has been kind of a push to have more things for people to get outside and do and kind of enjoy the natural beauty and the kind of the community spirit, spirit, <laughs> spirit. Yeah. The community spirit of the area is the impression that I'm getting. So yeah, I, I can definitely agree and relate on that. And that's probably a, a good segue into, I was going to ask you about what your involvement is in the community. I think you are active on a couple, within a couple of those organizations you mentioned as well, right? Yeah. So I've been a member of the Friends of Vienna for a couple of years now, um, helping support the Freedom Festival that we mentioned, mm -hmm. helping with one of our f biggest fundraisers, the bingo that we've put on for the past couple of years. And um, you know, just recently was appointed to the uh, Spencer's Landing uh, Development Committee. And so, you know, just all exciting things to contribute back to our community. Uh, I mean, in the past, I have volunteered as a uh, as a rec coach <laughs> for my son's teams, which is uh, always an experience. But, you know, you just you have to get involved here, right? Like be part of your kids lives, be part of the community and the betterment of it. Absolutely. What uh, sports did you coach? Oh my gosh. <laughs> we did basketball. He's done soccer. Um, How old was he when he did soccer? Five. Five. Yeah. Those leagues are so fun. My kids all played soccer when they were around that age and it's just chaos. I mean, as a, I, they had asked me at one point if I wanted to volunteer as a coach, I'd, I was just like mm, deer in headlights and ended up not doing it, which I kind of regret. But it was funny because that at that point, it almost seems like you're trying to herd cats more than like coach children. They just let them go. And it's just a whole swarm of children converging on the ball. It's so entertaining. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So 
throughout your involvement with all these, you know, different organizations and everything, I, I, what has your involvement been like with the Friends of Vienna? I, I don't really understand how this works. This is just kind of for my clarification. Uh, how involved have you been in helping support these different events that are going on? And like, what has your contribution been to that? So with the Friends of Vienna, um, we do meet on a monthly basis where we're working throughout the year to plan, organize every aspect of of the Freedom Festival that's inclusive of, you know, gathering donations and sponsorships and marketing and, um, you know, recruiting. We have a woman that does such a wonderful job recruiting food trucks and vendors mm-hmm. for the that piece of the the festival. And, um, you know, I would say I have been a, like an at large member, right, uh, mm-hmm. willing to help with anything wherever they need me. Um, but I have helped support with the planning and execution of of the bingo fundraisers, and um, we love bingo, so right. it's always the- yeah, yeah. And so the Freedom Festival, I'm going to camp on that just for a second longer. I know we've mentioned it several times, but also just for anyone who you know didn't attend or didn't realize the scale of that was impressive to me, and all the the variety of things that they've managed to lock down that have happened. Like they've had some, you know, pretty legitimate artists performing. And last year there was what that big kind of drone light show in place of the fireworks, which is really freaking cool actually. Yeah. Not in place of, in addition, in addition to, to the okay. fireworks. Yeah. So we had the drone show, what Friday night and then the fireworks were Saturday. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I missed that. I think I was actually out of town that oh. Saturday. I, I saw the drone show, but yeah, I didn't realize the fireworks would happen as well. Yeah. But yeah, it's just a lot of really cool things and just like a really relaxed kind of family friendly environment. My kids have gone the last couple of years and loved it. Um, which I guess kind of brings us to uh, the big question of why did you decide to run for city council? So, <laughs> great question. <laughs> um, sometimes I'm, I'm asking myself that now. Uh, why, Carrie? Ground yourself in your why. Um, but really, at the core of who I am, um, I want to I want to leave a positive impact, and I want to be able to make a difference in the lives of those around me. And specifically my, you know, fellow Viennians, I, I, I don't know if that's a real word. I'm just, it is, no, it's, it is. Yeah. it's on record. So, mm-hmm. um, but I, that's what I want. I want to help contribute to the betterment of our community and keep it a, a fantastic place to live. So that is why I chose to, to run for council. Absolutely. And in doing so, I guess a couple questions. One, how do you think your experience, both with your career in terms of managing all these different aspects of healthcare at all these different levels, and two, your involvement with the Friends of Vienna, how do you think all of that can inform your ability to you know, perform this public service? I have fantastic organizational and follow through skills. Um, I think that's what helps me in my day to day uh, career. I'm able to pull together various people, uh, set an agenda, identify what we need to accomplish and, um, you know, ultimately move it through the process. So I would say my organization and my time management skills are going to be, um, you know, an attribution to being on city council because I like to do my research. I like to be thorough. I like to understand, um, you know, and I think one thing worth mentioning here is I'm not representing me. Um, Mm -hmm. The purpose of the council, the body, is to be a voice for citizens, right? And I would like to think that I'm a good listener and would seek input from others um, as I do in my day to day. And so I think I have a a good handle on uh, remaining curious, as we like to say, and Mm -hmm. understanding various perspectives, because what I may think is the best and ultimate end goal may not be representative of of the mass, right? And so I want to be a true representative representative of the community that I'm living in. So, um, and in addition to that, I think, um, you know, just, you know, 
I think my age and the fact that I do have a young family and I bring a different perspective is going to, again, be an asset to counsel. It's no secret to anyone that West Virginia is um, an aging population, right? We have more people Mm -hmm. dying than being born. And it's important for the longevity of Vienna to show people why they should want to come here, why they should want to live here, stay here, choose Vienna as their home. And so I think for those reasons, um, I would be a an asset to the city council. Right. And so as a young family, do you have any kind of ideas? I, I've called them before pet projects. That's probably not a great term for it. But any specific things that you would like to see Vienna do? Anything you would like to you know, materialize the, to keep those young families that are here here and attract others to move back here? Like, What does that look like? What's kind of your vision for Vienna moving forward to make it a more accommodating place for those types of people? Well, specifically related to our children, you know, our, our children are our future, right? We mm-hmm. have to cultivate them and encourage them and make sure that they have access to every opportunity. So one thing that I'm particularly interested in materializing in my time, um, if so, elected to council, would be the expansion of the programs offered within Vienna Recreation. I think most people, when they hear recreation, they're like, okay, sports, but recreation's really an activity that that someone enjoys, right? So Mm -hmm. Um, I know that our schools here are fantastic, but when we talk about activities outside of school, like art, music, dance, those things cost additional money. And um, let's be honest, like the ability to, the more kids you have, the more it costs. And Vienna Rec does a really good job at keeping the costs low and capping it when you have multiple children. So what I would like to see is Vienna Rec expand and offer more activities within, you know, the arts and crafts, music, um, you know, dance, things like that, so that we can help our kids understand, is this even something I'm interested in? Right. You know, it's hard to decide if you like something unless you try it, right? When when we have our, our kids, how do we know if they like a food? We have to expose it, expose them to it. How do we know if they like an activity if we don't have a good way to expose them? So that's something I'm really interested in is expanding the services that we offer our children and the the availability of programs. Oh yeah, I I like that and. You know, my kids, like my oldest son, he is much less the athletic type. He has, unfortunately for him, he inherited my athleticism, but he's much more musically inclined. Like he's in band, he plays drums, he just loves that. And having some of those type of programs kind of aided by the city you live in, like those type of things available. And like my daughter loves dance. Yeah, I I would love to see expansion of those type of things. I I think that's great. And like you said, there's already Vienna rec is great for sports. Like I think two, not all of my kids, but two of my three kids have played uh, sports through Vienna rec and it's a great program. And if you can use, you know, what exists there to expand it and offer those other opportunities for them, then yeah, I mean, that sounds great to me. Um, I I guess now I was going to ask about some criticisms, I guess, from other candidates that have been kind of floating around, not just other candidates, I guess that's a little diminutive, but some criticisms that I've seen floated around. So your dad is the mayor, correct? Mayor Rep. Yeah. And so there has been some talk uh, levied at both you and some of the other candidates running for their relationship with people who are currently elected officials and just kind of indicating that that could sort of cultivate a little bit of, I think they have specifically called it cronyism, but just essentially saying that uh, you could be a yes man, or I suppose a yes woman rather, to to the other people that you have relationships with on in the city government. Do you have a response to that? Or, you know, how would you address those criticisms? I I mean, I figured at some point, right, it would it would come up, right? It's no surprise that my last name's Rap. 
Uh, when I got married, I chose to keep rap as my last name because I came into the world that way. I planned to go out the out of the world that way. Um, and honestly, I Mayor Rap first and foremost, he's my father, right? Mm-hmm. I've had the honor and privilege for the last twenty years, yeah, twenty years, to watch him serve the city, to be uh, a voice, to be an advocate, and so. I'm not surprised it's come up, but on a professional level or, or even a personal level, my dad and I have very different perspectives. We're from different generations. We had different upbringings. Um, we don't agree on everything, e- even today, right? We have healthy debates uh, where he shares his point of view and I share mine and we don't always, uh, you know, adopt the others, but we walk away from it respecting one another because we've built that relationship. And so I'm not going to support every, um, we're not always going to be aligned on every single thing. Mm -hmm. And so for people to misrepresent me as a yes woman, as you coined it, um, I think it's unfair because I've chosen to throw my name into the hat. Um, I think Jim said it the other day, right? This isn't really politics. This is more public service, right? Um, I'm doing this because I feel like I have knowledge and skills and time and the talent available to me to contribute in a positive way to the city of Vienna. Right. Yeah, that, that's, I mean, from my perspective, for whatever it's worth, and I, I'm not running for any office, so <laughs> uh, not much of anything, but uh, it's, it really is. It, it's local politics is not really politics. I mean, you are all just members of the community that want the best for the community. I mean, that. It has been my experience with all of the people that I've interacted with on these different, you know, I guess technically government bodies or whatever, you know, the city administration, every person that I know there has, is just a member of the community as much as anyone else and really wants the what's best for the community to continue. That's been my personal experience, again, just for whatever that's worth. Um, but I guess to kind of circle back around and and wrap everything up, I think I sort of already asked you sort of what your view would be, your vision for Vienna in five years, 10 years. And you already gave a little bit of kind of what you would hope to accomplish over the term should you be elected. But I suppose I'd like to just kind of give a, a, another, a, give you a chance to give another brief overview of you know what your goals were, what what your goals would be, what your values are, what you think you could bring to the city of Vienna. Yeah. So Drew, one thing that we didn't really dig into that I um, would love to cover mm-hmm. is um, my passion for our seniors. Um, so we have a fantastic senior center here in in Vienna that is um, utilized by a variety of citizens. But what I would love to see um, is expansion of um, utilization more broadly because our seniors are our largest demographic. And um, through a conversation um, with a a constituent, I guess you would refer to them as, a fellow community member, um, we were talking about how we've gotten to a place where in that particular person's neighborhood that their neighbors don't even check on one another anymore. And I, I think that we have a a duty to ourselves and to our community to continue that it takes a village mindset. You know, our seniors are the ones that paved the way for us and the reason why we have what we have here. And so we shouldn't turn our backs on them um, if we have an, you know, an elderly neighbor that is uh, widowed or just lives alone, or even if they still have um, a spouse or another family member or person caring for them, we need to be a village. We need to wrap our arms around the community and protect what we have here. And so 
you know, through the senior center, I would love to see increased utilization, membership, participation, and activities, and expansion of those services provided to our seniors, right? I, I, I've become my family's, you know, the resident expert on all things health care, health insurance related. Mm-hmm. Every, I feel every senior should have that same sort of advocate in their corner, whether it be they need help getting to a doctor's appointment, getting their medications, getting food, right? These are things that we don't think of because they don't directly impact like you and me, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But there are people living around us that this is very real for them. Um, You know, making sure that our seniors have access to post-life planning, right? Like, do they have, you know, wills in place? Do they need help with that estate planning? You know, how can we expand the services that we offer to our seniors to make sure that the whole person and their needs are met? So I would love to see expansion of our senior services. And that's something that I'm passionate about and would really love to spend my time, um, if, if so elected in the next right. four years, building out. Yeah. And the senior center is... I- I did not realize how nice and how well equipped it is, actually. I gave a presentation there about a month ago uh, just talking about you know, utilizing technology for seniors. And that was the first time I'd been in there. I just never had a reason to. And they gave me kind of a tour of the place. And it's a really nice facility. It is. And yeah. It seems like a great asset to the community. And being able to continue to expand on that and expand on the services they offer does seem like a great opportunity, like you said, for those people that really, I mean, we need to pay attention to. We need to care for. We need to not turn our backs on. So, yeah. Um, I suppose, uh, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Any kind of final wrap up thoughts? You know, I, as you mentioned in your earlier, um, comments, you know, you asked why, um, you know, with my education, my career, my family, why we've chosen to stay here. And I just want to reiterate that it truly is a choice. Um, I am passionate about West Virginia, passionate about Vienna. I want to leave the world a better place than when I found it. I know it sounds so cheesy and cliche, but you know what? I I like to live my life in a positive, uh, you know, outlook, upbeat manner. And I feel that, um, you know, in the next four years, I would have a lot to contribute to the Vienna City Council and continuing to keep the city that we know and love today Keep it that way and help make it even better. So for voters, I guess I would end by saying, I hope that you do consider uh, your five council votes carefully. And I do hope that you would consider me for one of those. Absolutely. Well, I thank you very much for your time. Thank you for being here. And thank you to everyone for watching this. Thank you, Drew.